Praise the Lord. Thank God for this day and, uh, and we are all here to honor Him and uh, learn from the Word of God. And uh, every moment we get new, every day is a gift. Amen. And what we do with it is up to us. Do we use it to honor God or for ourselves? But you are here. That shows that you are honoring God. And uh, um, so uh, this is open our hearts. Let the Holy Spirit speak to us. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for your word. And Lord, as we hear from you today, pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will teach us, help us to understand. And Lord, most of all, help us that we will apply it in our lives and practice it. And be with us, Lord, and let your Holy Spirit lead today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, I'll, uh, in the words of uh, Chuck Swindle, he's a well-renowned uh, teacher, uh, he, he talks about islands. Uh, no one is an island, right? And uh, what he says is, uh, nobody is a whole chain. Each one is a link, like, you know, change, right? You have change. It's, it's not one single piece. In a lot of little links. You take away one and the chain is broken. Nobody is a whole team, okay? Each one is a player. All the players make up a team. And if one player is red-carded or if one player is not there, then the whole team suffers. Nobody is a whole orchestra. Each one is a musician. Take away one musician and the symphony is incomplete. And then he says, nobody is a whole play. Each one is an actor. Take away one actor and the performance suffers. Nobody is a whole hospital. Each one is a part of the staff. Take one person away and it isn't long before the patients can tell. Even if there is no patient ever, then it's not a hospital. So, and same with cars. He says cars are composed of many parts. Each part of a car is very important. There is a reason why it's there. Each one is connected and dependent on another part. If a tiny screw or a part comes out, the car will either stop working, working or you'll have problems with your car. So uh, I'm sure you now know I'm sort of uh, where I'm heading. We need each other. We all need each other. You need someone, someone else needs you. And we are not an island. Each one, each person is not an island on its own. He also says to make this thing called life, walk, work, right? Our life, we need in our life. He says, we have to learn, uh, sorry, we have to lean and support, right? We have to lean on someone and we have to support someone. We have to relate and respond. We have to give and take. We have to confess as well as forgive. We have to reach out as well as embrace. We have to release as well as rely. Amen. God also taught, in the Bible, it also talks about our body. Each part of our body is important. If one part does not work properly, our whole body suffers. And so, um, Let's all turn to Romans chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. And um, we'll walk through the, these, these verses. Romans chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. Paul is uh, writing to the Roman church. And he's uh, helping them. He's teaching them. He's uh, giving them some instructions. And... Uh, um, Everything in the Bible, I mean, the Bible is a mystery. There's so much information in there. And uh, 
um, uh, like there's some things that you have to figure it out by the help of the Holy Spirit. Some things are literally there. It's straightforward. Some promises, like for example, are for those particular, in that particular time for some certain people in the Bible. And there are some promises for us now. Like, for example, God told Abraham, you'll be the father of many nations. He promised him that. We can't claim that promise, okay? That was for Abraham, okay? Then he also, uh, uh, like he said, another promise that he said was, uh, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. That's for us, all flesh. He said, he will pour out his spirit in the last days. And uh, young will uh, dream dreams, right? Something like that. So there's some things that was for, specifically for someone else in the Bible. There are some things that is meant for us. There's also uh, things that are written that uh, are for ex uh, illustration purpose, uh, to teach us something. Like uh, uh, he said, Jesus said that uh, so, so I went to uh, uh, sow seeds, right? He threw the seeds on, on, on his farm. Uh, and uh, he said some fell on rocks and some fell on good soil. What he was implying was uh, the spreading of the gospel, right? But, and it doesn't literally mean that we go around house to house and throw seeds at the houses, okay? But it, it implies that we uh, spread the gospel, some will receive it, some will not, okay? That's uh, sort of an illustration. You have to um, make sense of it, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Then there's some things that are literally there that you follow straight away. Instructions, straight away. You don't, it, you, it's not a mystery. It, you don't have to uh, go and study about it. You don't have to ask someone to uh, make you understand. It's just plain and simple instructions. And that's what Paul is writing here in Romans chapter 15. Uh, verse 1, he says, We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. I hope I pronounced that word. We then who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. It's simple. We who are strong, who are strong in Christ, who have been uh, a Christian for a while, we are to help the mistakes, the shortcomings of those who are new, those who are not that strong in Christ. We are to help them, encourage them, lift them up, guide them. They fall, we help them, pull them up. We are not to, um, uh, if someone makes a mistake, we are not to accuse them, we are not to judge them. It's pretty much straightforward. We then who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. No, it, it's not about us. We should be willing to, uh, you know, uh, put away our own uh, um, uh, pleasures or our own uh, agendas to help someone who is struggling. Right? Straightforward. Then, <clears throat> verse uh, 2. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good for his good, leading to edification. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good. Everything we do for someone, it should be for his good, to help him, to, uh, uh, benefit him, for his uh, edification, for his encouragement. We are to uh, not help someone for our own agenda. We are not supposed to help someone or oh, I'll help him and maybe he'll give me some money or he'll do something for me. Uh, our neighbor can, can be anyone in your own family, your brother and sister, your parents, your relatives, your actual neighbor next door. Uh, not to give him, uh, give your neighbor something to so expect uh, mangoes from his tree, uh, you know. Uh, but you're doing it for his benefit. Not, it doesn't say for your benefit, for your good, but his good. Your name, the person you are helping, okay? So basically, you're not wondering or you don't have your own agenda. Not about you. You're trying to help him, your neighbor, uh, 
Anyone, it could be anyone, in, even in the bus at your work. You're trying to do something good for him. To edification, for encouragement. Then verse 3, For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Christ did not come to this earth for himself. The reproaches of those who reproached him, even those who accused him, those who beat him up, those who hurt him, God forgave them. It was all for them. And if Christ, Bible says, if Christ did not do it for himself, he had a choice, but he said, Lord, God, if it's your will, let it be done. And he went on the cross. He did not, it wasn't for him. He did not gain anything out of it. What's there to gain? It's like someone uh, hit you and hurt you very bad. And instead of that person getting punishment, you say, I'll take his punishment. I mean, on his behalf. You get hurt and then you take his punishment. The reproaches of those who reproached him fell on me. That's what Christ said. It wasn't about him. He did it for us. Then verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. That we through the, space, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The Bible scriptures is there for our learning. Everything from the first page to the last page is to help us to encourage us, to lift us up. The Bible says the word is a lamp unto my feet. Lamp. If you're walking at night, you need a light in front of you to help you know where you're going. And this is what the Bible does. It helps us. It teaches us. And our hope is in Christ that we will be with him one day. Verse 5, now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. We cannot be like-minded. We cannot, cannot always get along with everyone, especially someone who hates us back, who doesn't want to see our face. But Paul is saying, now may the God of patience Patience, comfort, wisdom, all that comes from God. And He will grant us that. If you, you can only go so far on your own. You can maybe tolerate someone, be patient with someone for a couple of days, and then you lose it. But that is where you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Be like-minded. You want to be like-minded, meaning get along and be on the same page, be, uh, f uh, you know, um, have good relationship with someone, you need the help of God. It, it doesn't matter, brother and sister, parents, husband, wife, neighbors, friends, relatives, workers, you can't do it on your own. The Bible says, ask God to grant you then peace, that uh, patience and comfort, that you may be like-minded towards one another, according to Christ Jesus. Verse 6, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God and the Father of our Lord Jesus. When we are like-minded, we are doing things together. And the ultimate um, thing that, that must happen is that it should glorify God. Together, one mind, one mouth, one voice, some versions say, together. Just like when the uh, disciples were, uh, went to the upper room uh, and waited on the Holy Spirit. And they were all with one accord. And the Holy Spirit came. And that is what the Bible is saying, that we, uh, when we are in Christ, when we are like-minded, According to Christ, we glorify God together in one accord, in one mind, in one voice. Then verse 7, Therefore receive one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. This is 
the most important thing to help us receive one another. It's easy to receive someone who is nice to us. It's easy to uh, like someone or love someone who is nice to us. It's not Facebook where you just click the button, like, 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 like. But this is real. When we think about ourselves, what kind of person we were, and if Christ received you as you were, then why shouldn't we receive someone else as they are? No matter what kind of person, what he does. If Christ could receive us, and that's what the Bible is saying, that we should receive others as Christ has received us to the glory of God. Amen? That can be hard, especially when your neighbor is throwing stones in your, at your house or at your dog or, uh, you know, um, things like that. Uh, when you have uh, problems in your family, when your relatives uh, don't want to, you to come to their house, uh, things like that. How do you receive them? You receive them when you think that God received you as you were in your sin, in your uh, mistakes. He received you with your failures, shortcomings. And if He could receive you, why can't we receive those who are failing, those who are causing you hurt, causing you grief, and those who are causing trouble. If Christ could do that for us, we should be able to do that. Because we cannot be calling ourselves Christians when we go around hating people and saying, oh, I don't like him, I don't want to see his face. Then we are going against what Christ is all about. So, as you can see, these, these verses that we went through, written by Paul, are straightforward. You don't have to um, ask uh, you know, someone with PhD to come and explain to you. you. You don't even have to ask the Holy Spirit to come and tell you what it means, because it's pretty much straightforward. Anyone who can read English will be able to understand. And that is what our lives as Christians should be. But we need the help of the Holy Spirit to help us to be, to do what, the, what the, these verses say. To think about others, not ourselves. Always someone else to be given priority. You know, when you're driving around, if you drive, or if you're um, in a cab or bus, the way people drive can tell you What's in their heart? Like if they, you know, uh, allow you to go past or allow you to uh, come out of a junction, then really they are, in their heart they are thinking about, you know, others. Okay, let him pass through. Or let him park and I'll find another parking. But, you know, there are some drivers that they just, they'll blow their horn and won't give you any time. And it's simple, it's what's in their heart. They, they don't think about others, they have no courtesy. They, it's, it's all about them, they want the, their car to go. And, uh, and sometimes that happens in our Christian life. And the Bible says, I'm not just talking about the cars, but in a, every aspect of our life, are we pleasing others? In God's family, we are to work together. We, we have been created different, very different from each other. Special way in love and acceptance from Christ, He created us. But how do we live our lives as Christians? We need love and acceptance, we need tolerance, we need understanding, we need patience. And that all comes from the Holy Spirit. Romans 12, chapter 10, verse 10 to 13, Romans 12, we're still in the writing of Paul and he's writing to um, Roman Christians and he's saying, um, verse, uh, verse, sorry, we'll read from verse 9. <laughs> Let love be without hypocrisy, abha what is evil, cling to what is good. When you love someone, it's not, there shouldn't be any 
agenda. They should, it should be unconditional, just like Christ loved us. He didn't want anything in return. He didn't expect anything in return. And says, push away what is evil. What is wrong, don't have anything to do with it. It's not saying, Abba, what is uh, uh, evil people. He's saying evil. But you love the people, no matter what kind of person they are. Cling to what is good. Cling to what is good. Every good thing, you hold on to it. Then verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Preference to one another. Think about someone else first. You know, similar that car uh, ex- example I was telling you about. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. Always thinking about someone else. It's pretty much straightforward. Then verse 11 says, not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. One version said, don't, uh, that version said, not slothful in business. One version says, don't be lazy when it comes to serving Christ. Serve him with all, all your heart. Do it without expecting anything. Some people were downstairs, whole of yesterday, uh, fixing up the kitchen. And they just gave their whole day in, uh, down here to, uh, and they weren't even paid. They did not expect anything. They didn't uh, ask us to give them anything, but they were there uh, using their abilities, their skills to uh, work for God, do something for God. That's how we should be. In anything we do, we do it from our heart. Uh, verse 12 says, rejoicing in hope. What is our hope? that one day we'll be with Jesus. He has a place ready for us. When we rejoice in that hope, then we'll have patience in tribulation, the verse goes on, continuing steadfastly in prayer. When we face troubles, when we face hard times, difficulties, suffering, sickness, if our mind is on the hope, on the hope that Christ has for us, then we'll be rejoicing, we'll be happy. Okay, this is just for now, just for a short while, while I'm here. I'm suffering. It's going through a hard time because I know eventually I'll have the blessing of eternal life ready for me. God has prepared a place for us and we'll be able to rejoice. If we lose sight of that, then we'll get bogged down in the problems of this life. Struggling, struggling, struggling because our eyes have moved away from the hope that is we'll be with Christ one day. God grant us patience in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Steadfast. Be strong in prayer. Continuing. Don't give up. Then verse 13, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Simple. Help others. It's not about us. Those who are in need, help them. Be always considerate about others. This is what Christ expects from us as Christians. We don't have to um, have special uh, abilities or gifts or understanding to be able to achieve this. God is saying, we need each other as one, as a family. We are all worth it. If he gave his life for each and every person in this world. Why can't we do things for them? And when we follow this, and when we apply these principles in our lives, loving people without expecting anything back, pleasing others unto Christ for their edification, serving the Lord with all our heart, everything that we have, we cannot go wrong. The blessing of God will be on us. We all need each other. We cannot be on our own. We cannot uh, survive on our own. Because Satan is right there. Uh, There's this illustration uh, actually uh, by Ravi Zacharias. I wanted to actually read about it. uh, But he said, uh, the donkeys and the horses 
they defend themselves differently. Um, the, the, uh, the horses, they, when they are attacked, if there is a group of horses, they face each other and kick. Okay? They kick. So the, when the enemy comes to them, they are you know, kicked and uh, they, they run away or they die. But the donkeys, when they are attacked, what they do is they, they face the enemies, right? They face the enemies. And so the back, their backs are facing each other and they kick each other to death, the donkeys. But we should be the, like the horses. We are together. We face each other. We hold on to each other. And we, sorry, we together can, you know, defend against the enemies through Christ Jesus. And that is what uh, Paul is writing to the Christians there. And this so much applies to our lives right now. As Christians, we do things hand in hand. We uh, will be uh, going out distributing tracks next uh, Saturday. And we want to reach out to all the houses here in Kinoa and Zombati. Only one person cannot achieve that. All of us, hand in hand, we are doing it for the Lord. Without expecting anything, we are serving God. This is all I wanted to share with you. And I uh, hope that you allow the Holy Spirit, as the Bible says, to give you the patience, the comfort, the understanding, to be able to apply this in your life. And uh, as we be taking part in the communion, thinking about what Jesus did for us, he did not think about his, himself. He did not consider the pain and the suffering that he left to go through. But he had this hope. He had this uh, uh, determination, this goal that he will give himself up. He will, his blood will be shed. And then on the third day, he will rise by defeating Satan, by, get, by grabbing the keys of hell and giving us eternal life. Amen.